AJ Francis has been a thorn in my side for a long time now. Um, we work together at WWE. We train together. Like we've known each other for a while. So I am sick of him and I was okay dealing with it when it wasn't affecting me. Um, mm-hmm. But now, you know, taking it to that next level and putting me through a table in front of PCO definitely takes it to the next level. I think mm-hmm. PCO is going to take his digital media championship from him. And I'm very excited to see him be embarrassed by that. Um, as far as women's get- wrestling talk, the number one women's wrestling network on the planet. Bonjour, you're watching Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. My name is TK Trinidad, and today we have an amazing show, and of course, nothing but amazing guests. She's a model, actress, podcaster, rapper, entrepreneur, the queen of the deathmatch. She's back for the second time. Please welcome TNA Knockout, Steph Delander. How are you doing? Hello, I'm great. How are you doing? I'm great, too. I mean, I want to say you're great because you're in love. Um, I am. The last time we... <laughs> the last time we saw you, you uh, wrote a message to uh, PCO. Uh, it looked like you were, you know, going to Australia to finish some business. So the first question is, um, has he reached back out to you? Yeah, he has. We have connected again. Um, we've had some texts back and forth, but he does text like a nearly 60-year-old crazy French-Canadian Frankenstein. So um, I'm still trying to kind of decipher what he's even talking about at this point. Okay. And then, um, you know, just to, I mean, I don't know if you're going to tell me or not, but are you currently in Australia? Are you kind of getting your way to fly towards, you know, a Canadian city or where are you right now? So I am back from Australia. I am at my home in Orlando and I will be in Montreal. Oh, see, it's, you already answered my question. So are you there to support your man? Um, or is there another match that may or may not be happening that hasn't been announced? Well, I am there to keep an eye on things. I'm there to oversee things. I am on the uh, meet and greet on the 21st. Um, so okay. the TNA Impact tapings. I will be on the Impact tapings. As far as Slammiversary, the show itself, I mean, I don't know. I'll have to, it really depends on what goes down, you know? So okay. yeah, I don't know about some of us here itself, but I will be in Montreal. As I said, I do have a couple of other appearances lined up. Okay. So, cause I'm assuming that you're still seeking justice for the Las Vegas screwdrop, right? That is kind of like love has come in and love has taken over. So I haven't forgotten. I have not forgotten. I, you know, there is, I keep receipts. I've got a receipt in the back of my head um, and people are going to get it, you know, when it is time. But Jordan seems busy with Ash by Elegance right now. I'm very tied up in my entanglement with PCO. So I think I'm going to kind of go where the heart leads me. But I think okay. I'm sure at some point it'll lead me back to the Knockouts Championship. But as I said, I'm putting a pause on that right now. Okay. I mean, um, the, the great thing about you guys' relationship, you guys have a shirt that is out together. So, yes. you know, how did that come about? And, you know, how, you know, or, or, are you seeing a lot of people purchasing it? Or what's been the vibe like? Yeah. So, I mean, the shirt was very simple. I just was like, hey, we should have a shirt. So I hit up my designer, Kato, who does a whole bunch of my stuff. Um, and I asked him to design something. And he sent me back a draft and was like, what do you think? And I was like, that's such a cool T-shirt. I didn't have a single uh, edit for him. I thought he absolutely nailed it. And then I sent it through to the TNA merch team and they put it up on the website. So for, that was just me organizing that. Um, but with TNA, it's kind of very unique is that we have a lot more control over what we do. And it's a lot more hands-on, which works mm-hmm. for me some people are happy having everything kind of handed to them in a script or like everything set up for them and they just have to rock up do their stuff and go home for me i prefer being in control of my stuff as much as possible um so that's why you know getting a t-shirt designed or anything like that i would rather do it i would rather have control over it because then i'm producing something that i would wear something that i'm proud of um so yeah that's that was all me yeah, and how do you balance that? I mean, you're 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 doing a lot. The podcast, obviously, TNA, um, you know, other promotions. 
um, a trip to Australia and, and back. Like the, I just finished traveling. Um, I'm originally from Toronto. So I just finished visiting Toronto and it's just like, it's just so many things going on. So as an entrepreneur and wrestler, um, how do you balance it all? Um, I don't. <laughs> I Every day I have a list of things I need to do and I probably get 80% of them done. Um, and then I have a moment of, oh, I didn't do all the things I need to do. And then I need to remind myself that's okay because we have tomorrow and you can do a couple of them tomorrow. Or, you know, I'm getting better at like looking at my list and going, what is like the most important, you know, what absolutely has to happen today and let's do that first. And then we can kind of work down mm -hmm. from there. I also have ADHD. So that's a, like another battle with organization and prioritizing and procrastination and all that good stuff, which is uh, really hard when you're trying to run a whole bunch of different businesses. Um, mm -hmm. But you know what? I do my best. I get as much done as I can. And I try not to get overwhelmed. Uh, you know, sometimes I do. But at the end of the day, the stuff that I'm doing at the moment and the work I'm doing, the foundation that I'm building for my career, I feel like I'm in this really pivotal position of like laying down the foundations and building the brickwork to create what SDL is that then mm -hmm. for the next 10, 20, 30 years, whatever it is, you know, I've set the foundation for this. I've built myself up that then I can kind of capitalize on that. And that's my career set, you know? So I kind of look at it as right now, I have my hands in so many different projects and so many different things are going on. But I kind of feel like what you put in is what you get out. And if I wanted right. to kind of half ask this and if I said, screw it, I don't want to do the podcast anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm not going to release as much merch. I'm not going to do as many shows. I'm, you know, if I started to cut stuff from my routine, I would feel like, you know, I am not putting in what I can. And then I mm -hmm. think that the return would reflect that. In saying that, I have had to sit down in the last couple of months and go like, all right, I'm burning out where can I cut something? Like something has to give. And I think you do need to, you know, evaluate your situation. So I did have to sit down and go, okay, what makes me the most money? What is building my brand the most? What is the most fruitful? What helps me get to where I need to be? And mm -hmm. we're going to keep all that. We're going to prioritize that. What am I doing that I don't really feel like is kind of in line with that or isn't making me a whole bunch of money or I'm not really enjoying right now. And mm. I kind of had a realization of I was doing last year with Matt Cardona. We had to hit the ground running. We had to do every single show we could to get our package out there and to get everyone to see us and listen to us and be like, we are the new act and you guys have to pay attention. And we right. did that last year and it paid off. Um, and it went exactly, you know, the way that we planned it to this year I kind of got to a point where I was like, I am doing a whole bunch of like smaller independent shows that I'm not really enjoying in mm -hmm. some ways at certain shows. Mm -hmm. And the travel is screwing me up so much that then it's making it really hard when I get home to adjust on a Monday morning. Hey, we have a whole bunch of orders to pack and we got to film a podcast and we got to do OnlyFans content and we got to reply to all these emails. Like it became too much. So right. I kind of readjusted my focus and was like, all right, wrestling wise, my priority is TNA. TNA is what I'm focusing on. I'm also mm -hmm. doing GCW, but that's what I want my calendar to be as far as in ring wrestling. Anything else, unless they're offering me a huge packet of money or I'm free that weekend and I'm bored or it's something that I'm really interested in doing, you know, I'm not as quick to just agree to every single thing that comes my way because I'm just being right. mindful of where I'm putting my time. Yeah. It's um, mental health and, and balance is, is, is so important. And it seems like you've kind of really taken that shift where it's like you and Matt really established yourself last year's last year and now your name is out there. Um, but with that being said, what do you do on those, those moments? Like how do how does SDL like relax? Uh, SDL doesn't relax. Um, no, I like, I try my best. As I said, it's, 
it's a never ending battle of always feeling like there's more to be done. I could be doing more. And when you run your own business, I think you can probably understand this. When you're sitting on the couch watching a TV show, it's very tempting to grab your phone and go, well, I'll just look into this thing and I'll just order another one of these and I'll just schedule this for that. And da, da, da. it's really easy to keep doing shit. And then it's 11 p.m. and you go, oh, from the second I woke up this morning to right now, I haven't stopped. Like I haven't clocked off. It's not a mm-hmm. nine to five thing. So sometimes I have to remind myself like, yo, you need to put your phone down. Like you need to stop. So recently what I've found has helped is um, I've just started reading books, which sounds crazy, um, but I've just got into reading. So I've kind of allotted myself at least like 30 minutes per day, if not maybe an hour, but 30 is probably more realistic to sit down, put my phone down, do not touch it, take my watch off that dings every time I get a text message. And all I'm doing is reading my book and I try and do it sitting outside or I try and do it lying by the pool because um, we've got to pull it out complex. So that is like my don't talk to me. I'm not thinking about work. I am just reading whatever I'm reading and I'm immersed in it. So I found that has helped to kind of like reset myself. Like if I've had right. a morning of a few hours of doing stuff, if I can sit down for 30 minutes, eat lunch, recalibrate, read for a bit, then I'm ready to go like, okay, now I've got another few hours of doing stuff. It's just kind of like right. this reset. Um, yeah. I, I used to have that um, when I worked out because I used to train at a CrossFit gym and I'm having a break for like just a couple of months just to give my body a rest. Um, but CrossFit was great for that too because it was an hour of like, don't touch yeah. your phone. You're doing a class, no work. And I, it was sad, but I realized like that was the one hour of the day that I didn't touch my phone. Like yeah. that was the and only CrossFit, time. Yeah. And CrossFit workouts don't really allow, I, I, I'm, I'm a big proponent of CrossFit. I've done CrossFit for a, a very long time. Uh, I was t- I'm taking a break as well, but CrossFit, it doesn't, the workouts don't really allow you for, for you to, even if you go to your phone, you can't, you don't have enough time to actually. You yeah. Know, you're not, a, you can't be on your phone and you also can't even like, you're so mental, you're so gassed that you can't even be thinking like, you know, if you're doing bicep curls, you can go, Oh shit, I should reply to that email. But if you're doing CrossFit, your body and mind is like in that workout for an hour um, yeah. And I miss that. So that's, yeah, when I, as I said, when I get back to it, I'm looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I've had to replace that half hour or hour of like, do not fucking talk to me with something else. And that's been reading. So that's been good for me too. Oh, nice. And um, is there anything in particular that you like reading as far as, um, you know, nonfiction, fiction? Um, because I, I like reading as well, but what happens is I'll read for work. And so that's, it kind of defeats the purpose. So is there anything in particular that you like reading? Well, I've kind of done the same thing too. Like I find, like I read a book um, from, his name is Gary V. He's like an entrepreneur. Yes. I read yeah, I like his, him. Yeah. yeah, the, I can't remember what it was called, but the one with like the purple and the yellow on the front. I read that inter- uh-huh. uh, recently. That was really interesting. His newest, his latest book. Um, I read, uh, You know what is crazy? And this is so bizarre. But I was at the airport and I was like, I need a new book. And I bought um, 50 cents, one of 50 cents books. I can't remember which one it is. I'll have to find it and I'll send it to you. But Uh I'm not kidding. I think it was like a four hour flight. I Mm -hmm. read it start to finish the whole flight. Didn't touch my phone. Didn't look at anything else. I read the entire book. It was so insightful. It was so, and I didn't expect that from 50 cent. Like I love hip hop. Um, right. But I didn't expect to feel like so, I don't know, connected and inspired by it. I was like, oh, this is yeah. crazy. Um, I just finished Ronda Rousey's autobiography, which her that latest book, which was great. So I mm-hmm. like, I don't know, I like realism. I like mm-hmm. a real story. I like an autobiography or something where my bra- I, I like to learn about yeah. shit that I care about. I'm not really interested in reading like a book about dragons and what, like, I don't really care about that. I still want to feel like I'm like, my brain is kind of working, yeah. which I know yeah. kind of defeats the purpose, but I also know myself enough now to know, like, I'm just not going to connect with something if it's not my vibe. So if I can find something that, you know, I'm interested in and I can keep reading and reading and reading, then like, let's just yeah. do that. Yeah. Inspirational. Um, uh, Rick Ross also has a good bio as well. If you want to check that out. Um, Ooh, okay. Is, I'll have a look. 
yeah, so definitely uh, check that out. But kind of going uh, back to the, the wrestling uh, things. Um, so PCO is having a match with AJ Francis. Uh, he recently put you through a table. Um, so, I mean, is there some vengeance on the mind for Slammiversary in regards to AJ? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely not happy about that. Um, AJ Francis has been a thorn in my side for a long time now. Um, we work together at WWE. We train together. Like, we've known each other for a while. So I am sick of him. And I was okay dealing with it when it wasn't affecting me. Mm -hmm. um, but now, you know, taking it to that next level and putting me through a table in front of PCO definitely takes it to the next level. I think mm -hmm. PCO is going to take his digital media championship from him. And I'm very excited to see him be embarrassed by that. Um, as far okay. as vengeance or revenge, I mean, I think PCO is going to have that handled. If needed, you know, I'm never afraid to slap that giant man in his face again. So I can do that again if I need to. But as I said, I, I have complete faith in PCO that I think he's going to be able to get the job done. All right, there, uh, there it is. So when he does get the job done, what is on the game? You know, you've condensed everything to, you know, pretty much uh, TNA and, and um, as far as wrestling is concerned. So what's the goals? Because I know you're a huge goal setter. What's the goal for the rest of the year? So the goal for the rest of the year within TNA is honestly to, and this might be breaking the fourth wall a little bit too much, but to create some really entertaining segments and some really like add value to the show in different ways. And I think I've already done that since being in TNA the second time around, like the work that we've been doing has been getting a lot of attention and I've kind of been taking notes and realizing what does work, what doesn't work, what people are interested in viewing. You know, I've been looking at all the analytics on social media and seeing what is doing really well. Um, you know, throughout the whole show. So for the next six months, I'm mostly focused on keeping myself and putting myself in a position of being one of the main players of TNA. You know, like when you think about this current iteration of what does this TNA look like? You know, when we crossed over from Impact, it became TNA. You know, all of these changes, there are so many different things going on that there's kind of this like new breed, you know, and it's like, I want my name. I want Steph Delander. I want SDL to be at the forefront. When you think about TNA, you think about me. Um, so that's kind of my plan for the next six months. And then moving on from that, you know, I think the knockouts world championship is definitely still in my future. I always, whether that's, you know, my main goal or whether that's in the back of my mind, I will never kind of lose sight and take my eyes off what's going on on in the knockouts division with that. So that's, but that, as I said, that's not in the next six months for me as far as what I am focusing on. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. focusing on kind of creating the best content and the best work that I can do right now within the storyline that I'm in. Um, but then moving forward, as I said, you know, the Knockouts World Championship is definitely in my future. Okay. Uh, last question before we uh, get out of here. It's kind of a two-parter. One, uh, have you and Matt kind of um, looked at, um, planned anything? Is there anything that we can look forward to as far as you two are concerned? And then the second one, um, what do you think of like the for forbidden door between TNA and WWE and those crossovers? Um, Matt and I are always cooking up something. Uh, and I think you guys just have to keep your eyes peeled. He has been injured for the last few months, so we haven't seen Matt. But knowing Matt, he is the kind of person that if anyone's going to do a grand return, it's going to be him. So I'm sure mm -hmm. that, you know, when he does come back on screen, he's going to do it in a very elaborate way. Uh, so that's all I'm going to say about that. And then as far as WWE and TNA, I mean, I think it's a cool time in wrestling because we never have seen this before. We've never seen WWE so openly promote, cross promoting with other promotions in this way. You know, we've had Jordan Grace and Joe Hendry and the Rascals on NXT. We've had Tatum Paxley and Izzy Dame on TNA. We had AJ Styles and uh, EO just wrestling in Japan this past week. So, there are so many moving parts. I think it's great 
for everyone. I don't, I don't see a drawback. I think, you know, I think it would be uh, ignorant to say that there's probably a part of TNA's extreme success with selling out Slammiversary and how well they're doing right now. I'm sure Mm -hmm. part of that could be this new buzz with the WWE uh, crossovers. I think WWE is benefiting too, being able to take the biggest stars from TNA and use it on their show. So I feel like it's one of those things where it's kind of like they scratch our back and we scratch theirs. As far as whether or not I would be interested in doing that too, you know, it's all going to come down to circumstance. I do think there are some interesting story beats that could be explored at some point, and that's what I care about more than anything else. I'm not really interested in, like, oh, I would have a cool match with whoever. Like, I don't really care about that. For me, it's more like, who there do I have unfinished business with? And there actually is a couple mm-hmm. of people that I do have unfinished business with um, in reality and in storyline. So I think if I were to show up um, in WWE in any form, yeah, whatever happens, you know, if I were to show up in WWE, it would definitely be um, something worth keeping your eyes on for sure. Ooh, you left it on a cliffhanger. You don't want to say any names that you have unfinished business? I mean, I think if you watched, if you watched me in WWE, like, you know, I was in the, I was literally in the middle of a love storyline when I got released. I was True. dating Duke Hudson, you know, and one week I was on TV and the next week I wasn't. So I was in a situation where I have a boyfriend in NXT and I have a boyfriend in TNA. So oh. that in itself is interesting, you know. Uh-huh. And then also m- I was tagging with my best friend, Indy Hartwell, in real life. You know, that's my best friend. And we were in the middle of a tag team. Um, she's still in WWE. I'm in TNA. I think there's something interesting there. So mm-hmm. I think those are, you know, there's some there's some meat to that story, but we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. I am uh, definitely excited to see you at Slammiversary, and, I, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of shenanigans, some great things happening, um, uh, you know, with your romance with PCO and then with your um, frenemyship with uh, AJ Francis. Uh, so we'll see what happens, but thank you so much for joining. Uh, where can everybody find you and also purchase your lipstick? Um, you can find me at Steph Delanda on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And if you go to stephdelandastore.com, you can find my DSL by SDL lipstick and all of my other merchandise. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys uh, can follow me everywhere at Patreon. You can follow Women's Wrestling Talk everywhere on, on everything at www.talkpod.com. Thank you guys so much for watching Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks Bye. for joining WWT. Don't forget to like us on all social media platforms at WWTalkPod. Like and subscribe on all video and audio platforms like yesterday, my G. And check out our website at www.talkpod.com. Thanks for watching Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling network on the planet.